economics is this idea that people don't act as we assume they would act in traditional economic theory. And in particular, what that means is they don't maximize. In normal economic theory, we assume you have a utility function, you maximize it, perhaps there are some constraints. But based on that, this determines what you're going to do. And what behavioral economics says is people don't maximize. They make decisions in many other ways. They use heuristics or rules of thumb, or they have biases that impede this maximization. And as a result, the decisions they make are not those that you would expect of a traditional economist uh, making a decision. And if you think about a graph of different sciences, on this axis is how accurate is the prediction that the science makes. And on the y-axis is how parsimonious is the science. That is, how many degrees of freedom are there, how many parameters are there. And as you can see, I put economics and psychology on different sides of this graph. So economics as a science is very parsimonious. There are very few degrees of freedom. And what that means is that you can make a prediction of what will happen in a very wide range of scenarios. On the other hand, the accuracy is kind of low. So although you can make a prediction, often that prediction is wrong. In contrast, in psychology, the theory is very accurate. So it does a very good job of making a prediction in different settings. But it is also not very parsimonious. There are many degrees of freedom. There are many parameters. There are many situations where you can't make any prediction. So you make fewer predictions, but they are more likely to be right. And what behavioral economics does really is try to push these two together. So it takes economics and it moves it in this direction by saying you're going to give up a little bit of parsimony in exchange, you're going to get a lot of accuracy. And as well, it also moves psychology in this direction too. It says let's be willing to give up a little accuracy in order to get a lot more parsimony and get a lot more situations where we can make a prediction. So there are quite a number of experiments and settings which have demonstrated how you can use the fact that people make biased decisions in order to affect their environmental behavior. Uh, there's a very famous set of experiments around a power company called O-Power, which sends information to people's homes and tells them not only how much energy they've used and how much they have to pay, but also compares their energy usage to their neighbors. And what it showed is that when you compare your energy use to your neighbors, and you say you use more than your neighbors or less than your neighbors, people decrease their energy usage. So they found that people use 2% less energy when they were compared with their neighbors than when they weren't. And the people who were the high energy users reduced their consumption by 6%. So you can change people's energy behavior by comparing them to other people who they see as similar to themselves. A similar uh, finding was, was demonstrated in the use of water, that if you send people uh, information about how much water they use compared to their neighbors, you can get them to decrease their water usage, here by about an extra 4 or 5% relative to people who didn't get that information. So I think there's a lot of opportunities to think about these behavioral factors and to design behavioral interventions that don't really cost very much and yet influence people's behavior in a productive and socially beneficial way. So for the examples from the power and the water, you were sending out a letter anyway. All you do is change what's in the letter. You change the language in the letter and you get a behavioral improvement. That doesn't cost the taxpayer anything and it doesn't even cost the person receiving the letter anything. This is not like you're making energy more expensive or water more expensive. You keep the prices the same. But simply by providing this kind of social information, you can induce more conser conservation, conservatory behavior. There's quite a lot of work going on in that field, trying to create models of the fact that I care not only about my consumption, but about your consumption, and maybe I care about how they compare to each other. So there's a number of theoretical models that have driven to incorporate these factors. Um, but I think more needs to be done in that arena, and there's certainly a lot of opportunities.